హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఈసీ అకాడమీ ఇన్ దిస్ లెక్చర్ లెట్ అస్ అండర్స్టాండ్ స్ట్రక్చరల్ రిప్రజెంటేషన్ ఇన్ డిజిటల్ విఎల్ఎస్ఐ డిజైన్ ఫస్ట్ లెట్ అస్ డిఫైన్ వాట్ వి మీన్ బై స్ట్రక్చరల్ రిప్రజెంటేషన్ ది స్ట్రక్చరల్ రిప్రజెంటేషన్ టెల్ అస్ హౌ కాంపొనెంట్స్ ఆర్ ఫిజికలీ ఇంటర్కనెక్టెడ్ టు పర్ఫార్మ్ ఏ ఫంక్షన్ సో ది స్ట్రక్చరల్ రిప్రజెంటేషన్ విల్ టెల్ అస్ హౌ ది కాంపొనెంట్స్ ఆర్ ఫిజికలీ ఇంటర్కనెక్టెడ్ టు పర్ఫార్మ్ ఏ ఫంక్షన్ ఇన్ ది ప్రీవియస్ వీడియో వి అండర్స్టూడ్ అబౌట్ బిహేవియరల్ డిస్క్రిప్షన్ విచ్ ఫోకస్డ్ ఆన్ లాజికల్ ఆపరేషన్స్ లైక్ అండ్ ఆర్ అండ్ నాట్ వితౌట్ వరియింగ్ అబౌట్ ఫిజికల్ స్ట్రక్చర్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ది బిహేవియరల్ డిస్క్రిప్షన్ మే సే A and B, but structural description describes how the components are connected. For example, how the transistors are connected to perform A and B. So from this you might have understood. In the behavioral description, we will focus on logical operation. For example, if we are having an operation A and B, so the behavioral description will focus on the logical operation that is performed but the structural description will focus on the physical interconnection of transistors for example here to perform a and b operation how the transistors are interconnected to perform the structural description or structural representation will focus on a language called as model so this model is developed by lattice logic limited the model gives us the formal way to define the circuit components and their interconnections so the model gives a formal way to define the circuit components and their interconnection if we say interconnections which means the connections at transistor levels now let us understand the structural representation in model here we'll understand how model works in model circuit elements like transistors are defined along with their interconnections so here you need to remember in model the circuit elements like transistors are defined along with their interconnections so this is how the general syntax are represented in model this syntax defines the circuit block such as nfets and pfets and how they are represented for example here in this general representation first we have given the circuit name you can give the circuit name which you are using this represents the input and output then which components we are using in the circuit and what are the connections for drain gate and source so this is the general syntax representation let us consider an example of inverter description in model so an inverter takes an input and produces the complement of the input as the output so in the model representation of inverter the part is considered as inverter you can give the circuit name so here it is represented as inv with input and output we'll take the component name which we are using for inverter which is nfet whose drain is output whose gate is input and source of the nfet is connected to vss so we need one more component which is pfet whose drain is connected to output whose gate is connected to input and the source of pfet is connected to vdd then we can end the model so this is an example of uh, representing an inverter using a model now let us consider the second example to represent two input nand gate so this is the code corresponding to two input nand gate that is based on the circuit which is shown here in this circuit we are considering two nfet which are connected in series and we are declaring an internal signal i1 that represents the connection between these two nfets and we are having two pfets that are connected in parallel and 
the output is connected between these PFET and NFET. So that's why the part is NAND2. So two input NAND gate with inputs A and B along with the output. And we declare an internal signal I1 that connects the transistors. The first FET connects I1 to VSS and input across the gate is A. The second NFET connects output to I1 and the input across the gate is B. So we are declaring this code similar to how this circuit is connected. So similar to this, first PFET connects output to VDD and input across the gate is A and second PFET connects output to VDD and the input across the second FET is B. Since both the FETs are in parallel, the representation across drain gate and source are similar. So why we use structural representation? Let us look at some key advantages. One of the major advantage is explicit connectivity. If we say explicit connectivity, which means you are defining the exact transistor level structure. So there will be no confusion about how the circuit is built. Second advantage is performance optimization. So if we say performance optimization, which means you can alter the parameters like transistor size or capacitance to optimize the speed and power of the digital circuit, which means while defining the model, you can specify size, which is very important parameter for transistor or you can add the capacitance value to get some delay in the output. So using size in model, or by adding capacitance value, you can optimize the performance of the circuit. Third advantage is hierarchical design, which means the smaller components can be combined to build more complex circuits. So using small components, we can build more complex circuit. These are some of the advantage of structural representation in a digital VLSI design. Now let us understand how to add the performance parameter in the model. So this is the example of adding performance parameter to NAND gate model. So for the previous example here, we add size is equal to 2 to PFETs. So which will increase the size of PFETs for better speed and power characterization. We have also specified the capacitance values that will provide the circuit delays. By adding these performance parameters will provide huge advantage for fine tuning performance of the circuit. Now let us understand how to build the complex circuit using hierarchical design. So this is the example of structural representation that enables hierarchical design by building the D flip-flop, which is the fundamental component in electronic circuits for storing the data. So this circuit is designed by using the smaller components. As you can observe here, TG is a transmission gate which passes or block the signal based on the control input LD and LD bar. So which will act as input to this transmission gate. And also we have used inverter, first inverter with input A and output Q bar and second inverter as input Q bar and output as Q. So this is the circuit of uh, flip-flop which are built using a smaller component. That's why we can call this as hierarchical uh, design. So here we are having the transmission gate along with the inputs LD and LD bar. And we are having two inverters, first inverter with input A and output Q bar and second inverter is with input Q bar and output as Q. So using these small components, we have written the model that represents the hierarchical design. So this hierarchical approach using smaller components to build the large 
complex circuit makes the circuit design scalable and reusable. So you can define the component once and you can use it multiple places which will make the circuit very efficient. Now let us see the comparison between structural and behavioral representation. The structural representation will focus on transistor level connectivity and the behavioral representation will focus on logical functions. So these we have clearly understood in today's uh, lecture. This is the example of structural representation where if we take the components, for the component what are the different connections we are making will be represented. This is the example of behavioral representation where it will concentrate more on the logic level representation which means it will focus on the operation of the circuit. Compared to behavioral representation, the structural representation has performance detail which means we can add capacitance value, the size of the transistors so that we can optimize the circuit. But in behavioral representation, we will not have any performance detail. Here, the structural representation is flexible in parameterized descriptions, but behavioral representation is limited in parameterization. So, we cannot add much parameters here. So, we can add parameters that will make the circuit more optimized. The structural representation has more details and hardware specific representation, but behavioral representation is more abstract and it is easy to understand. This is about structural representation in digital VLSI design and also the comparison between structural and behavioral representation. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.